Okay. Here now. Yeah. Sure. Hi. Does this hat look crazy? It was really hot out. Yeah, it's amazing how hot it is. So yeah. quickly. Just because I had no shading before. Just kind of nice to move the umbrella. So what do you think of all this weather? Oh, I'm glad it's not cold. <laughs> I lived in the Northeast for a long time, and uh, this is much better. I'm not going to complain if it's too hot. Plus, I've also been in places where it's way hotter. Like, because in New York, in like the, in the summer, it's a miserable kind of hot. This is like a nice, sweet hot. So I'm not complaining. Just move the umbrella and get to work. So do you think that the uh, weather's changed since you were a kid? Just do you notice anything with weather patterns or anything? Or summers aren't the summers that you remember as a kid, or the winters aren't the winters? Well, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I've lived in a lot of different places. So it would be hard to say that, that, that I can tell if they changed in certain areas. I've been in different areas, you know. I've been in, like, I was born in England, and then I was in New York, and then I was in, you know, Europe, and... Since I've been out here, it's only been maybe almost 10 years, and uh, I can't really tell too much change. I know everybody talks about um, global warming, and then I hear things, you know, like I heard it was so warm in New York this year, but um, I don't know. I also think it's sometimes doesn't seem to be warming up, doesn't seem to be changing as much as people talk about it. Like maybe the talk is a little excessive. I also think it's a little excessive for people to assume that they have that much control over the earth. I mean, uh, surely we can affect things, but they was here before us, we'll be here after us. So what made you decide to become a, uh, a, a painter as your sort of... Oh, well... You know, I um, I just did graffiti when I was little. I did graffiti just kind of, this is my thing. And uh, and it just evolved into this. So I, I would be running around writing on things, writing my name on things, and it was definitely like not artistic. I can admit that. It was not an artistic thing to do. It was more like destructive, if anything. So... Why do you think people... Uh express themselves uh it's you know it's destructive but at the same time it is you know it's become an art form it's influenced culture yeah you know it's influenced uh, certainly uh city culture urban culture things like that it, it can be expressive and very political at the same time too and how why do you think that's turned into sort of a platform for expression uh, especially for people that live in you know uh, urban areas stuff like that well i think because of all the advertising there's so much public advertising that it's become apparent that it's helpful to put the message out there visibly for people to see in public areas. And uh, if anything, like, as soon as it was broken, then nature should be the only one to decorate the environment. As soon as that broke, obviously the artists want to have a hand in it. And to be able to do something for nothing just for the act of doing it, just to please whoever sees it, or to piss off whoever sees it, you know? There's something, like, really freeing about that. I mean, I, I like doing it because I like to talk to people. I'm, I can't really talk to everybody. So if I leave a painting somewhere, it's kind of like a conversation that's going on after I'm gone with whoever sees it. myself kind of like a pop artist in that like I try to embody what's happening in culture like what I hear about I paint about what I hear about like I don't really have a lot of solid opinions myself I don't really have a lot of solid belief system stuff but when I hear people oh everybody's talking about Bernie Sanders I'm gonna paint Bernie Sanders everybody's like you know whatever is going on 
is what I do. I've been in trouble for some of the stuff that I painted. So it's interesting, you're kind of almost being political as things sort of politically swirl around you. You know, if someone says, hey, Bernie Sanders, you painted a picture of Bernie Sanders or Obama. Or yeah, yeah. I've painted a, a lot of different things that are going on in like the, not only the media, I don't watch television or anything and I hardly read, but I do like to sit and listen to other people and their perceptions of the media, like the people around, and I like to... I like to hear different people from different classes talk about their perceptions. And so that's really where I get my influence. So if a bunch of people are talking about a subject, I'll usually paint it. What are some of the things that intrigue you about what people are talking about, or what they seem to obsess about, from your standpoint? Because, you know, you're not, you know, absorbed the way that they are. What sort, of, what sort of surprises you at times or shocks you? I just find it really informative to know what's going on and to see what people's opinions are. I always find it surprising to see how one thing can look so many different ways depending on who's looking at it. So you like hear someone talking about something and then you hear someone else talking about the same thing in a totally different manner. And it, it, you, it just gives you kind of an insight to why there is... Um, disagreements in the world. Perception being um, skewed depending on people's history or, you know, where they're from and what they've encountered in their lives. So do you, th uh, do you let things that you've encountered in your life affect you as you continue to move forward? I mean, I'm sure they do. I'm sure of it. And sometimes I can't even pinpoint what it is, but like I'll be in certain situations and like feel uncomfortable. And maybe I can't even recall why certain situations make me feel uncomfortable, certain smells, certain people. Sometimes I can recall. Sometimes I'm like, I had a bad experience with that person. I had a bad experience in this place. I had something that hurt me physically, emotionally, challenged me. Um, I definitely am influenced by that. I do try, like, my main, like, thing in my life right now is kind of rooting out that stuff because I don't want to, you know, there's a difference between, oh, don't touch a hot stove because it's a hot stove and then, like, being afraid of certain things that aren't actually a threat because of past experience. So I've been trying to figure that out by, like, really just looking at my past and looking at my present and it's as it has to do with my past. So why do I feel that? What is that about, you know? Well, you live in a very interesting area where, you know, for some of the people that live here, they feel, you know, there's things to be afraid of or they, they feel a certain level of threat or uncomfortable, you know. Yeah. Is that something that you think about or worry about or concern yourself with? Well, what do you mean, like a threat, a uh, crime threat? Yeah, crime. Oh, I don't think, I mean, I, my experience has been positive. I'll be honest with you, like, I'm friends with most of the criminals, you know. Like, I try to be friends with everybody. Like, I try to, I do paintings for the police department, I do paintings for gangs, when someone gets hurt, whatever, dead, whatever, jail. I try to really be of service to my fellow man regardless of where they're aligned and in that way I feel protected. You know, I come correct with everybody. So I don't really feel like a, a lot of fear. Like the people that come up and thank me for what I do are like varied from like all different kinds of walks of life. My challenge is is really just to be open and honest with people so that um, they know I'm not a threat and I'm also not a target, that I'm more of service as their friend than their enemy, and I'm ready to like give whatever I can to whatever is in, you know, in need, you know. How were you able to come to that conclusion uh, in, in life? For a lot of people, that's very, that, that's very difficult. I mean, they, they, they do quantify and categorize and put people in specific boxes, and then they have a specific uh, way or mode 
that they react or, or, or treat them. Like certain people, they see them walking down the street, oh my God, I'm gonna cross the street. You know, they yeah. just Yeah, and I guess that's learned behavior by their experience, which is why I try to really look at, I mean, I'm not saying I'm perfect at all. Like I said, I get feelings. And I, but my point is like, I have to write down that feeling, like talk about that feeling with someone. And why, why do I feel like that? What's my part in that situation? And you, sometimes my part is like holding on to the past, you know? Holding on to something one person did, or you know? Or sometimes my part is I acted like a dick, and that's why that person's acting like a douche. But um, I've also, like, I've, I've put myself in a lot of different social situations. Like, I grew up with my father while he was studying Marx at the, at the new school, and he had me reading Das Kapital, and he later became, like, kind of money-oriented. So that was a flip. You know, and then, uh, and I've, I've like, I've been homeless in my life. I was a drug addict for a long time. I've also like worked with some of like top wealthy people in the world and uh, done, uh, I've just done a lot of crossing over. I've been in really decadent situations and I've been in sleeping in doorways. And, and that's why, I mean, they say that's what an artist, artist doesn't abide by a class system. Like, we can cross all social boundaries. And, and that's why, you know, when I, um, when I paint, I, I paint on people's things. I paint on canvas. I sell paintings in galleries. But I also go around the street and I paint on the street. Um, sometimes I get in trouble for painting. Sometimes I get paid for painting. Sometimes it's the same thing. Like, and, and so my experience is now that like everything doesn't lead to the same disaster or reward. So I need to have an open mind. Like I, I can't make an assumption about anything because it's ever changing. Everything's different. Like I could do the same exact things and in some instances go to jail and in some instances get paid. And it's freaking bizarre to me. Like, but it definitely opened my mind. Do you think things change faster now in the world that we live in? You've got to continue to move quickly, adjust, evolve. Um, faster than when? Then, ten years ago, twenty years ago, thirty years ago, when you were a little, little girl. I mean, it's all through my perception, right? So it's hard right. to say. But um. I really think it depends where you are and who you're around. Just things change faster. I guess technology is... Because you were born before the explosion of digital technology and, yeah. and cell phones. I, mean, and I don't know if that made as much difference as when they invented like light bulbs and cameras, you know. There's always been like something happening. Cars, airplanes, everything that they've come up with has been changing us. I don't know that it's faster now. It's definitely in increased communication between people, which I love that. And I really do think like communication is the key to peace and happiness in the long run. Communication and understanding. And, and not to say that it isn't used for bad also, when people use communication as a form of propaganda to stir other people. But that also can get cured by them just looking into something more and finding out more information. But the more information you have, the less likely you are to be swayed in a certain direction. So I'm all for this digital age of, you know, everything. Social media. I know people that are bothered by it emotionally or whatever. But I find it really helpful. Anything that helps me to see what else is going on in the world, I'm, I'm into. And it helps me to connect with people. Like I just did this cross-country trip where I met people along the way through a lot of times social media. And they helped me out. They gave me like stuff to paint. They gave me jobs. They gave me places to stay. And I had like really no... I had like no plan. So social media can help, uh, you don't need as much of a plan Well, it's good for connecting. social media. Yeah, yeah, it's good for connecting. Um, like I didn't have to write letters to get things online, like, you know, line up stuff. Because the digital age, it'll all happen like, you know, within seconds. 
I just put out a thing saying, I'm in town, you know, and then that's what happens. I just think we're, we're ever evolving in every way. Um, what are we doing wrong, I guess, is a better question. I don't even believe in wrong or right. I don't even think that there is a wrong and right. So I don't think we're doing anything wrong. I um, mean, you know, what can we do more of? Uh, we can just love each other more, I guess. That's always good. Try to like look at things more, try to communicate more. But it all happens in due time because like I truly believe there's a downside to every single thing we do. There's an upside to every single thing we do. So I'm not saying like, this has to happen now because who knows what the fallout's gonna be. So it's more like, you know, just go with it, do the best you can do. There's Brie, my beautiful mermaid princess. <laughs> Look at this trike I'm painting. Let me ask your opinion. Do you think the eye is good there or no eye? Because that's the, I kind of tripped up on that. I love the eye. Okay, good. Okay, good. It's gorgeous. Thank you, good. Well, I, I liked it with the, with the, um, Skulls and the butterfly, and then I was like, "Is that eye too random?" I don't think. I think it's badass. Okay, good. This is fucking Grohl's bike. How cool is that? What? Yeah. No way. Yeah. No way. That's badass, dude. I know. He has the brat. What? My little truck. Oh, he does. <laughs> he went to a meeting or something. It's a, a really funny morning. And this is my friend, uh, Rick? Fred. Fred. Hi, Fred. Fred is making hey, a documentary. Good. That's awesome. You pick the right chick to be in here. Well, it's really funny. I was uh, encouraged to pick the right chick from another person. And <laughs> not, e not even here. They were in New Mexico. Oh, funny. I was having coffee with someone in New Mexico. And I told him I was on my way to Cali. And they said, oh, my God, I have a person you need to talk to. <laughs> You have to talk to first. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I'm trying to place who it is. Well, he's definitely a fan. That's for sure. That's so sure bad. Your work. Uh, Can you guys park at this time? Uh, we have like 15 minutes. Thank you. Uh, what? Uh, yeah. That's what Liz said. I don't think so. I've never... He's more sober. I was just like, uh, I don't like that. It looks like it's Billy says, spies in the house of love. No, I think Liz likes him. Ah. She's probably... That's my perception. Really? Well, um, I want to see, uh, Liz Taylor in Um, I just want to see the picture. I gotta get, oh, I'll send you the picture too. Uh, whenever she gives me the first thing, I guess. She hasn't even totally told me what size. We talked about two different sizes. Did you, um, did you get the picture? No, I haven't seen her. That's so funny though, because Lori, even if I tell her, we'll probably be like, who? Because like, oh, no <laughs> she was so excited about knots in the hair. <laughs> she was the one who came over and freaked out about your hair and brushed it. I know. Then she's like, you got him out. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. It's so hot. Guys. I have to get back to my car. Okay. Love you. I love you, too. Thank you for coffee. Do you need some cash, actually? No. I just... I'll get you later. You can buy... You bought me enough coffee. Mm. Uh, uh, I'll talk to you later. If you want some, Fred, help yourself. Or text me. Mm hmm. When I'm talking later. Or yeah. Go over to that cedar spot. Oh, we gotta go. Yeah, we'll see how the day goes, but I wanna go later. That's not till 8 30. No. 
air wand. Oh, oh, that spot. Yeah. yeah late afternoon pizza. Pizza time. <laughs> Allison's like one of my favorite people. Yeah, she's really cool. She's so rad, yeah. And Brie is fun too. So my ladies. A lot of ladies in my life now. I always had these crazy people here. And now I got some good solid people, so I feel good about it. That's good. Why do you think it's important to have a few good solid people in your life? Because like sometimes you just need to forget your problems. You know? With people that won't make you add to your problems. Like, I like to talk about stuff. I mean, this is multifold. Like, I like to talk with Bree and Allison. I like to talk about stuff that's bothering me and get their input. But I also just like to laugh about it sometimes. And um, forget about it, but not in a dangerous situation, you know? Like, people that I can trust and people that have my best interests. Like, aren't trying to get anything from me. I mean, it's a sticky world for that. There's a lot of weirdness going on and as long as I know what people want I have no problem but when you know that someone doesn't actually want anything it's a great great feeling I just want what's best for you or something mm -hmm. you had said earlier that um, you had kind of gone down the rabbit hole a little bit with the uh, drugs and things like that? Oh yeah, yeah, I was, I was at mess for most of my youth. Like, and I think it started with me just trying to be open-minded and also like connect with people. And in the end it like kind of tore me away from everything and made me super closed in on what I wanted, which was drugs, alcohol, whatever. Um, but I don't do, I've been like uh, completely sober for like three years. Before that I had some time sober, but I got, um, I got, I kind of messed up with prescriptions and then it became more of everything. But now I have like a hard time trusting doctors because of that. Now, why do you have a hard time trusting, or a hard time trusting doctors in the healthcare system at large? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I don't think that a lot of the pharmaceuticals are very good for me personally, especially the ones that I was prescribed at length, you know. I was prescribed a lot of pharmaceuticals that I wouldn't necessarily say I needed and I didn't really know what I was getting into and I was a sober like ex-heroin addict you know which I was honest with the doctors about and it's my fault too for not looking into it more but like you know the medical profession is supposed to be trustworthy so at this point I like I'm kind of like I don't know I don't know about What do you think should change about the healthcare system? I mean, at this point, I'm kind of still navigating it. Um, but I like that there's so many options now, you know, with uh, Eastern medica medicine and acupuncture. And, you know, there's so many different healers and things that are getting... I mean, maybe it's just where I live, but I have access to a lot of different alternatives. And I find that that's great. I'm just glad that there's alternatives. Because, you know, not everything works for everyone. And I understand that some people need the, um, the pharmaceutical stuff. And I understand that there's an upside to it. I'm not saying anything should be, like, taken away from anyone. I don't, I don't want to do that. But, um... For myself, like, I have to look at alternative things, you know. Hmm. Well, that sounds like that would almost fit with your pathology as a person. Yeah. That's the sort of the summation of your... Yeah. ...existence. He's trying to figure out what to put. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's good that there's options. I think it should be more uh, widespread. I think there should be more knowledge of the options. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if people need to know what's up, right? That's the, that's the kind of scary thing is that sometimes people aren't told, and especially kids. But, you know, I do meet a lot of people that know way more than I've ever even heard. So, I think it just falls on the responsibility of a human being to communicate with other humans as to the options and how to, like, improve their lifestyle. It's your responsibility to do that. You know, talk to other people. Talk to as many people as possible. And figure out what works best. Like, try new things. Be open-minded. I mean, that's my experience. That being said, there was times in my life when I probably would have been forever altered if it wasn't for the medical industry being able to fix certain physical deformities that happened to me. Certain catastrophes that I might have been in a wheelchair for the rest of my life if it hadn't have been for some corrective surgery and stuff. So I'm not. You know, maybe I should be in a wheelchair. Maybe that would make my life different. I don't know. But what I'm saying is like, it has had positive effects also. So I can't say like, oh, we shouldn't have this system. I should say that there's a lot of different things to do. And for me, if I had checked in with enough people about the medications that I was prescribed that ended up causing me to relapse and become, and then almost die on heroin, if I had communicated more with people, I would have found out that that wasn't something that was good for me, that that was a risk. But it's my bad. Like, I just went blindly. I mean, it would have been nice if the doctor was a little more thorough, and I questioned the doctor, but you have to talk to multiple people. You really do. Did he see any significance in, you know, for the first time in history? Or yeah, in yeah. History? I mean, it's definitely happened in other countries, and it should happen here. I wouldn't say that I would, like, want someone to do it just because they're a woman, because that's more sexist than not having a woman. But, um... Of course, it's, yeah, it's definitely intriguing. It's definitely progress. It's a nice way of changing people's perception because there are people out there who have a, a kind of a negative perception of women that it might help them to see that happen. It might change the way some of those people act towards myself as a female, and that's always helpful. So why do you think that people have these sort of perceptions about women, um, sort of putting them in a different category, or it, at times it enables you to, you know, navigate the system through the... <laughs> through their through, system. Through, through, yeah. I guess it's called sexism. I, guess, I don't know where it came from, except that, you know, throughout history, women being treated differently due to their uh, physical structure, makeup, emotional nature. But I meet a lot of guys that are emotional too. I don't know if that's a current thing that didn't happen in the past. But um, you know, being a, being a caretaker, being a giver puts you in a bad spot in a lot of uh, situations. If someone doesn't treat you properly, have respect for you. And then that falls on you for not communicating your needs. Yeah, I don't know where the... I don't know where it started, obviously, the, um, the way people treat women differently. But, you know, there's, uh, there's just this... Physically, there's times when women aren't able to perform up to the standard of whatever physical thing needs to be done. And that could be what started it, I guess. I'm trying to think what to put on next on this. So what do you like about this country? 
Burn America? Yeah, let's go America. Um, the, from what I've seen, uh, it's been very uh, accepting. I guess maybe, I don't know if it's just the places that I've lived. I tend to stick to uh, coastal cities. Um, but um, I felt very embraced. And um, when I lived in different parts of Europe, there was parts that I felt very judged. Um, but that was maybe more to do with the fact that they were rural areas. And I was coming from a city with a city mentality and a city style that probably scared them. But, uh... I like, um, you know, the stuff that I like about America is true of any um, first world country, urban environment. I like having access to culture. I like having the ability to, to express myself. I like having access to technology and access to other people as similar minded and thus and not similar minded that I'm able to discuss things with that have information that I need or am interested in. But that's true of any first world like co country with technology and that sort of thing. Then there's things that I like about the rural areas, that they're not jaded by commercialism, that they don't need to sacrifice their peace of mind for money. Like, there's an upside to both places, both styles of places. So I know that you said you, you don't necessarily spend a lot of time with the current events and things like that. Yeah. But um, there's some interesting laws that have popped up mm -hmm. in the Southeast. There's one called the Religious Freedom Act which allows someone, if they have a difference of opinion with someone based on religious belief, they don't have to necessarily offer them goods or services or something like that. They can actually tell them, you can get out of my store because you're gay, get out of my store because you're Muslim. Or and it's public spaces? And it's public spaces. Yeah, I mean, public spaces is just public spaces. There shouldn't be different laws, and it's one thing, it's public spaces. Segregation is illegal. I mean, that's the bottom line with that. I don't know what people are going through in that area where they need mm -hmm. to be exposed to stuff, but like, you know, every now and then I think there's an uprising in people that are scared and they get a little power. But I'm pretty sure it'll be overturned. I don't think that kind of thing can last. I mean, a public space is a public space. And the law has already been set in motion that it's illegal to be secular, or whatever, be uh, prejudiced in providing services. I mean, that's old school shit. I don't know how long they can, I don't know how long they can make that work for them before people are gonna like bring more heat on them than they would have had if they just let it happen, you know? That's basically asking for trouble. Maybe they need trouble. Maybe they need to have their shit shaken up. But like doing something like that is just antagonistic in my perception. Like you're looking to piss somebody off, basically. President of the United States. What would be your sort of order of business? My order of business? I don't know. I don't feel like... I mean, I'm glad that there's a system of checks and balances and there's a whole bunch of people running shit and not one person, because that would be crazy. But um, I don't know how much a president can push through on their own. But I like bringing people together. I know that people work better in unison with each other. 
and like my part of the puzzle is like to do the best that I can do and to let the fuck go and have the next person do the best they can do when the common thread is to be like wanting we're here on earth to make each other feel comfortable happy and healthy you know I feel great when I know that it's the right thing because that's when I feel good when I make someone else feel good I mean we're kind of like in a lot of ways we're all like cells of this bigger thing and like if we're fighting against our own bodies it's cancer type shit it's crazy we're like one organism we bring it the best we can that's why I'm like when I hear about stuff like people trying to separate from depending on what like their sexual preference is retarded <laughs> you know like that's retarded that's like excuse me using that language my friend got fired from Google for using that language but that's another thing like I don't think that language should be you know things don't need to be super controlled like less control is maybe a little better less telling people what to do what to wear who to be who to fuck like maybe a little better because who knows what's going to come out of it Oh shit. Was I supposed to meet this person? Hmm. Anything you want to say in closing? In closing. I don't know if the last thing I said made sense. In closing, I just think we all need to take care of each other and love each other and trust each other. And that will be like, just, you know a little bit uh, easier <laughs> than all the rest of it. And I'm just trying to do, you know, my part in that and talking to people. Because talk is the first step towards love. A communication. you got to know what you love and then put it into it. How to take care of someone. How to, how to help. You know. But, um, yeah. Thank you.